Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host. So in the uh, lead in here, you got a little flavor of uh, some winter weather we're experiencing here on the the west, or the, excuse me, the eastern end of Lake Erie. We're, um, we're actually just a couple miles kind of east of Erie, PA on um, right off 90th at the TA uh, we got a load it's delivering over in uh, just kind of south of Sayre Pennsylvania so not too far south of the uh, New York PA line that's delivered tomorrow morning at 8 so it's a couple hundred miles away and I think we'll maybe head out of here about zero three and get over there so um, I wanted to share some uh, couple of thoughts uh, tonight and by the way please tune in tomorrow uh, tomorrow is a big big anniversary in our national history and certainly in in naval history and it's a uh, and, and I'm gonna do kind of a thing about somebody um, tomorrow um, and yeah so it's uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about google it it's a big deal and you know we, we always talk about 9-11 don't forget you know well there's a lot of those do not forget dates in American history and tomorrow is certainly one of them so um, gonna have some more stuff on that but so you know we did a video yesterday we interviewed uh, Paul the the uh, new trainee on my truck and we had been over to Dodge City Kansas and um, so I was a little bit curious I mean certainly like you know you hear about Dodge City and and you know famous lawmen like Wyatt Earp and Bat Masterson and others that were there in Dodge City and so I was curious about it and you know what was interesting to me is that that whole like Dodge City thing um, you know it all happened within a span of about four years really um, about from 1882 to 1886 and what had happened is there was a there was a cattle disease and it, it, you know because they would run they would run these longhorn steers up from Texas to places where the rail lines met and so you know a lot of towns in Kansas like Hutchison and, and of course Dodge City and stuff became cattle towns but what happened is they kept moving this quarantine line to the west and you know excluding towns that were farther east in Kansas from having cattle come from Texas for you know processing or being put on trains or whatever to go other places for basically from having commercial stockyards and so as that line got moved farther west it's excluded more and more of Kansas that was um, that was handling cattle and so in that brief period in the 1880s, Dodge City became kind of like this boom town and uh, had all the, you know, bad actors and brothels and saloons and it was just this cattle boom town. But it kind of petered out because they, because eventually what made it a boom town also took that away because they kept moving the quarantine line and people moved, you know, f went f even farther west and, and so it was this, it was this brief period of history. It wasn't like it was like, you know, years and years of just being this wild west town. And it just kind of by, you know, by 1890 or so, it just kind of had fallen back in, if you want to say that, uh, got reverted back into being this small town out on the plains. Now, certainly the two biggest employers there are still cow, you know, beef processors. Um, and that's the reason people from Prime end up there a lot. But um, yeah, so it was um, it was just interesting to me that uh, that this town that is kind of legendary, really, it was this brief period in history. So anyway, um, I wanted to talk about something. You know, I've I've seen a lot of videos, like kind of of this of the vein of. Why are people leaving Prime? And also, you know, we, we, we often talk about the kind of money you can make in trucking. 
but from personal experience, I know that making a lot of money at a job is not enough to keep you in that job. And it's certainly not enough to keep you happy in a job if you don't enjoy the work. And, you know, the other day I was walking into a truck stop and I was just thinking about the things I like about this job. Now, certainly being away from home is not one of those things. But what I do like is the freedom that the job affords me. Because if I don't, if I have a load, right, I'm kind of constrained. I got to get that job done. But I like the I like the fact that I don't have these projects, and and you know a lot of you may relate to this. I don't have these projects that drag on for weeks or months or years. And if you know anything about the court system, you know that a lot of court cases are like that. They're they're not really projects, but they just drag on forever and even even before there's like you know appeals and if, if you're familiar with the, the Charles Dickens book Bleak House right and, you know it's about a case that just lasts for you know lifetimes basically and while that's a little bit exaggerated in today's you know court systems at least in the United States it still is the case that that things just drag on and I and you know we had this saying when we were trying to like do put projects together like uh, the legal and financial aspects we we called it deal fatigue and where people just get so sick of trying to get the same thing done over and over and having like little roadblocks and and little things that other people want and you know and you see it in sports negotiations and you know it's just it, it it's one of those things that you don't really have to worry about in trucking every job is a few days and then if you don't want to do the next job you don't have to um, and I, I like that aspect of it and I also feel a lot of job satisfaction because you know even many times when I'd walk out of a courthouse and my client was ostensibly happy because we got a good result um, you know I just I just never felt a lot of job satisfaction because as soon as I get in my car I'd be like somebody be calling me from my office or somebody else is calling me and I gotta I gotta think about the next thing now you could say well um, you know that's just the lifestyle and that's true but I've been in positions where, you know, no matter how much I was paid, I just wasn't that happy in my job. And, you know, this job is hard some days, but, and it, you know, like it's, it's been snowing and there's gale force winds going to be blowing here later. Um, that's the forecast, but it's, but it's like, I just have to deal with that once it's over, it's over. Um, and I, I think there's something to be said about that. I think there's something to be said about job security. You know, as an attorney and running my own law firm, I did pretty well financially, but I also spent a lot of time just trying to make sure that the clients I had didn't leave. Now, you know, that's the job of the sales department at, at, at a trucking company. But I, I feel like when I work at a trucking company, you know, I don't have to wait too long to be able to make money again. And, you know, that that's another thing that I like about this job is if I want to run, there's stuff for me to do. If I want to go home, I don't have to worry when I'm home that somebody's going to call me and be like, hey, we got this. I mean, I guess it's possible, but like it never happens, right? But you know, I can't tell you how many times, like I can remember being at Disney World with my family one time. And like every time I wasn't like really in the middle of something, I was on the phone. Now part of that was my fault because I just felt like this obligation um, to be available. And, but, but also it was like people were contacting me and, and you know, it was, it was always like that. It's like, you know, I'm riding my bike across Iowa trying to have a vacation, recreate, but I still got to answer the phone, 
right? Like, you know, the phone rings and then when I would get to some town where I'd get off my bike, I gotta stop and answer it. And, and I feel like even driving, like driving a truck, like your boss, your fleet manager, you know, driver manager or whatever can call you. But like, if you don't answer, they're not gonna get mad because they're like, well, he's not answering because he's driving, you know? And um, it's always a good excuse. The only good excuse lawyers had is, you know, I'm in court, I can't take a call. But, but then it would just be like a bunch of stuff piled up. But, you know, there's a lot of intangible benefits to doing this job. And there, there are benefits that I think are important. You know, um, there's, you know, you can make this into a low stress career that pays decent and gives you a lot of, um, can give you satisfaction with a, with a job well done. It can give you, um, you know, peace of mind. You don't have to worry about where the next client's coming from or whatever. You just gotta get their stuff from A to B safely. And I think when you're thinking about doing a career change, um, whether getting out of trucking or getting into trucking, you know, you gotta think about stuff like that. Um, you know, people leave this industry for different reasons or they change carriers for different reasons. Um, and you know, like I see a lot of these guys flying by me on the highway and even that, right, is like, I don't like it when I have to like drive like a maniac or if I have, you know, like really, really tight deadlines. Um, and I'm, so that's one of the other things I like about Prime. And I feel like some of these guys that are, like contractors or whatever um you know with amazon especially stuff this time of year like it's just absolutely has to get there immediately and uh so think about that when you're thinking about a career you know think about like client demands and customers i mean like fast food you know or retail customers are really jerks and demanding a lot of times um, and for what you know like like I don't think you make enough money in those industries to really deal with that and I, I know my partner used to have this thing called the uh, the asshole fee and it was just the extra money you would charge a client when they're jerks um, heck we even we even had people we didn't want to be clients but we wouldn't turn them down we just ask for an exorbitant amount of money and just hope that they wouldn't bite um, but that's a, you know, that's kind of a, um, that's a double-edged sword. And so, anyway, I just wanted to share that because I think there's, like I said, there's, I think there's something to be said for quality of life on the job, um, and not being just burnt out all the time. Um, it's one thing to be tired, it's a different thing to be burnt out and, and really not want to go to work the next day. Um, or, you know. It's a Sunday. It's a Sunday evening that I'd like to enjoy with my family, but, but frankly, I'm thinking about what I have to do on Monday, and that's not a, you know, it's just not that much fun. So, anyway, uh, be careful out there. Uh, the it's like <laughs> starting to be winter. So, um, and yeah, we'll have a we'll have a pretty interesting show tomorrow, and I, and I hope you'll hope you'll tune in for that. So, take care, and uh, we'll catch you very soon here on Tim Travels. Bye.